This week we've been talking about allergies and allergic conditions in our pets. Yesterday, Dr. Tobias and I touched on things that sometimes are diagnosed as allergies, but really are not. So I initially talked about this subject in my first book, From Needles to Natural, and I covered it again in uh, my latest book, Keeping Your Pets Naturally Healthy. And I thought it was really interesting. I picked up the two books and noticed Pookie is the cover dog on both of these. And Pookie sadly is no longer with us, but clearly I love Pookie. So she gets used a lot. She was adorable and very photogenic. So what I wanna talk about today is uh, something called syringomyelia and also Chiari malformation. And I'm gonna read um, from the book a short excerpt out of the chapter that talks about uh, this disease in particular. So it's very common in Cavaliers and English toy spaniels, which is how I became familiar with syringomyelia and Chiari malformation. But it's also found in other brachycephalic, which are the short-nosed breeds, such as Brussels Griffon, Maltese, Yorkshire Terriers, Chihuahuas, Boston Terriers, Pugs, and Pitbull Terriers. So we've even got a large breed dog in here. So with syringomyelia, part of the nervous tissue of the spinal cord is replaced by a fluid-filled cavity. So instead of just having this long, solid uh, cord of nerves and myelin and all the things that go together in the nervous system, we get these kind of a fluid-filled bubble, and that expands within the spinal cord and causes pressure against the nerves as they're passing by that area. And the disease is commonly combined with Chiari malformation, which is where the back of the skull compresses the brainstem and the back and the top of the spinal cord. So normally <clears throat> the brainstem is part of the brain and it's all within the skull. On these dogs where the back of the skull drops down very quickly and very straight, part of the brain stem can actually be outside of the skull and the bony portion of the skull is compressing and putting pressure against the brain stem and then that causes pressure within the spinal cord. So when we combine that with those fluid filled syrinxes that we see in syringomyelia, uh, this can be a very painful condition. A dog can have one without the other. Uh, Chiari malformation is the most common cause of syringomyelia, but not the only cause. Facial nerve paralysis also uh, commonly accompanies these diseases. So our little guy, George, has facial nerve paralysis on the left side of his head. He can't blink his eye on that side. His lip droops, his ear droops, so one ear is lower than the other. Until I figured out that he was actually paralyzed, I kept thinking my groomer was doing a really bad job making his ears not look even. Um, so symptoms with these diseases can vary, and I've actually had two uh, horseback riding students, human students, who suffered with these conditions. And it's very painful, causes incoordination in people, causes headaches, migraines, um, tripping, stumbling, and literally people just think that they're being a klutz, but really it's they cannot control some of the motions that they're making with their body, and a lot of times they're not very well balanced. So symptoms can vary in the dogs. They usually include pain and scratching at the neck or air scratching, chewing along the spine or scooting. So what does that sound like? Oh, scratches a lot, scoots on their butt a lot, chews on their back a lot. Well, that sounds an awful lot like allergies. Veterinarians unfamiliar with this disease will commonly treat these dogs with steroids and antihistamines for non-existent allergies. Unfortunately, steroids will help relieve symptoms, generally, of syringomyelia and Chiari malformation. And so that leads owners and the veterinarians to believe the pet really does have allergies when they are dealing with something much more significant. So I was at my 30-year college reunion. And so we had about 25 veterinarians. We all graduated in 1984. And I had just written my first book, From Needles to Natural. And we were sitting at dinner and people said, oh, well, what's in the book? What's it about? And so I started listing some of the things that I talk about in the book. And I said syringomyelia and Chiari malformation because there's a chapter on that. And out of the 25 or so veterinarians sitting around the table, 
everyone got a very puzzled look on their face. One person, happened to be the guy who graduated first in our class, one person had ever heard of it. And everybody looked at him and said, how did you know about this? And he said, oh, I went to a neurology lecture. Now, he was probably the only person nerdy enough to actually want to go to a neurology lecture because they're probably the most boring thing you will ever sit through. That and toxicology. But anyway, he said, oh, I was at a, a neurology lecture at a conference and they talked about the disease. That's the only reason I know anything about it. This is not something that we learned about in school. I don't know if it's being taught in school now or not, but I had never heard of it until I started adopting and fostering a breed of dog that is known for having this condition. So uh, many dogs will not allow petting of the head and neck. So Forrest, who has hydrocephalus, he may have SM and CM as well. I have no idea. We haven't had an MRI, but he will not let you pet him on the head. If I go to like, scratch him or snuggle him or rub his ears, he's like this. He absolutely does not want his head touched. Um, Gabby, who has these symptoms, and these diseases, we cannot touch the left side of her neck. She immediately falls over scratching. So what would someone who's not familiar with this disease think? Oh, this dog has an ear infection on the left, or this dog has serious allergies. That's why she's always falling over scratching. But if you watch these dogs, you will notice a pattern to what they're doing. So for Gabby, it's left side. If I want to scratch her on the right side, pat her on the right side, groom her on the right side, we have no issue. On the left side is always an issue. She cannot wear a collar around her neck. I had one patient who the owner had moved to New Jersey from somewhere else and had a Cavalier. So she found out I was the Cavalier person. She brought the dog in and she said, I have to take this dog in and get his anal glands expressed every two to three weeks. They always say the discharge is normal. They're not impacted, but he scoots and chews back there all the time. And I said, well, this is a Cavalier. Any other symptoms? And we went through with all the symptoms. And she said, no, the only thing he does is scoot, which by the way, Forrest scoots as well. Um, and so I said, I suspect this may be an SM symptom. And at the time, uh, the only thing that we were using was gabapentin, which I don't use gabapentin anymore for my dogs and I don't recommend it unless you have a dog with intractable pain that we cannot control with natural methods. But we put this dog on gabapentin, the dog never scooted again, the dog never had to have its anal glands done again. That was a symptom of the dog's SM and that is where it chewed. So another one of our dogs who had had an MRI we usually think of the syringomyelia and chari, chari malformation as causing problems up in the neck pain in the neck area. However, this dog had syrinxes all along his spinal cord. It was not just in the neck. It was in the neck. It was in the thoracic area. It was in the lumbar area. The dog had syrinxes everywhere. So when you get a dog who is chronically chewing at one spot on the spine, could they have a spinal misalignment? Yes. If they are one of these breeds, could they have a syrinx and pain in the spinal cord in that area? Absolutely, they can. Diagnosis of this disease, uh, let, uh, let's see. So many of them will not allow grooming. They'll shy away from touch. They don't allow petting of the head and neck like forest. Um, they'll cry out when running, jumping, or being handled. And when you pick them up and put pressure under their chest, a lot of them will yipe. So we get the complaint a lot. Well, he went to jump on the sofa and cried when he went to jump, or he jumped down from the sofa and cried. Gabby will not jump down unless she is pretty desperate. If she thinks there's a really good treat being handed out in the other room, she might jump off a piece of furniture, but she hates jumping down. She also can't jump up, and that's because of her luxating patellas, which is a totally different story. Okay. Uh, so diagnosis is made with an MRI. Radiographs are really not very useful because this is a soft tissue problem, although you could look at the structure and shape of the skull, which might give you an indication like, hmm, maybe but the way this skull is built, we might have some Chiari malformation going on there. Symptoms can occur at any time, but they tend to happen mostly in the middle of the night. So our dog Charlie would scream at 2 a.m. every day, every night. Um, 
Other times, they, they can go for days without symptoms, and then they will might be miserable for days because this disease is also affected by barometric pressure. So when storms are rolling through, when we get that summer damp heat and it's very humid, and then we get the thunderstorms, a lot of times that will exacerbate the symptoms with these dogs. Our dog Shayna, when those storms would come through in New Jersey, she would drag her left hind leg, and then I would have to up her medications or supplements on those days. And if I could be proactive knowing that barometric pressure changes were coming and I would get her started ahead of time, then we could sometimes cut that off at the pass. Symptoms may progress over time, but it's impossible to predict whether they're going to progress, how fast they're going to progress. Um, treatment can include surgery on the spine, which is expensive, dangerous, and doesn't always decrease symptoms. And many of them end up having second or third surgeries for scar tissue that forms and other problems. Um, I have never had surgery done on one of my dogs. I've never had a dog that's bad enough that their quality of life was horrible and needed to have surgery. Um, one of our little dogs did spend time in the ICU at University of Pennsylvania, and at their ICU Christmas party for all the survivors, there were two Cavaliers there that both had had the Chiari malformation and syringomyelia surgery performed on their skull and drains put in to drain the fluid out of their spinal cord. Uh, they both survived and they were doing well, but they were only about six months post-op. Um, most of these dogs, we will find that they end up back in surgery again. Um, so drugs that are used, unfortunately now, a lot of the veterinarians are using Apoquel. Well, again, Apoquel is kind of like a steroid. It is masking symptoms Maybe it's decreasing pain, but again, it doesn't help us differentiate between one of these diseases and allergies. So we really have to look at the pattern that the pet is showing because most of these pets have a pattern. I had one Cavalier that I helped diagnose having this issue. Uh, the dog had, it would go around the house and take its right front paw and scrape it down corners, corners of furniture, corners of wall. Um, and so I happened to be in a hotel room at an event and this person brought the dog for me to give an opinion on. And there were a bunch of dogs in the room, including my own. And this little dog, when he would get stressed or when another dog would approach or if he would get nervous about something, I watched him and he would go to the corner of the bed and do this, chew on his foot, scratch, get up and walk away. He did that probably two dozen times in a span of about 20 minutes. And it was a, it was a repetitive pattern that this dog was doing. Now this dog had had both dew claws removed because of the chewing on the front foot. The veterinarian decided that his dew claws must be bothering him. So he had surgery to remove both dew claws. Then the veterinarian said, oh, he must have allergies. So they did allergy testing and allergy desensitization. Shockingly, he did not get any better. And so then they were treating with all kinds of stout allergy medications. Shockingly, he did not get any better. And once the dog was treated for the disease that he actually had, he got better. And the owner was upset because he was destroying the furniture. As you can imagine, if your dog raked its claws down the corners of your furniture, and the dog had, it was just a repetitive pattern. He was not trying to be destructive. He was not OCD, um, and he was not allergic either. So my favorite treatment for these guys now, which also will not distinguish between allergies and SMCM, but it will decrease pain and inflammation, is PEA. Palmateal ethanolamide, or PEA, um, it will help block pain signals. It also decreases inflammation. It has worked phenomenally well for a lot of our allergy patients, but it also is extremely helpful for SM and CM. And so that is what I use for my dogs now, and that is why I don't use gabapentin anymore. I don't use steroids for them. Do we have the occasional bad day where they're really symptomatic? Yes, when we get those storms, that sort of thing, then maybe I see a slight uptick in symptoms. But for the most part, my dogs live a very, very comfortable, active life. Forest races around our yard like nobody's business. Um, Gabby is just an older girl who's pretty laid back anyway, but she certainly can run across the backyard when she wants to. Um, 
So if you have one of these breeds that could potentially have this disease and your veterinarian keeps saying it's allergies and you've done allergy testing, I got... Um, I got an email from somebody the other day. They sent me their allergy results. This dog is horribly itchy. Sent me allergy results, and it happens to be one of these breeds, and the allergy results were negative for everything. I'm like, well, I don't think your dog has allergies. So we need to stop treating for allergies, and maybe we need to look at does this pet have something like this going on, or do we have a spinal misalignment? When we have nerve pinching, think about it. If you sit on your feet for a while, it's gonna fall asleep. Your feet are gonna fall asleep. When you get up, what do you have? You have nerve tingling. It's that horrible sensation where you're like, ah, make it go away, make it go away. That's what these guys feel. They have nerve tingling, they have nerve impingement, they have nerve pain. And so we need to treat that. And a lot of times we're not dealing with allergies. So if you have one of these breeds and your veterinarian is not familiar with this diagnosis, you might wanna print out some information for them. Um, interestingly, I had one client who their dog was a Cavalier that had syringomyelia and Chiari malformation, and her veterinarian happened to actually own Cavaliers and be a Cavalier person, and she went to him with her dog with all the symptoms and said, I think it might be this, and he was not familiar with the disease and didn't think that that's what it could be. So sometimes we have to educate our veterinarians. Like I said, everybody in my class except for one person that was at that event had never heard of it. This was eight or nine years ago, but I don't know how much is being said about it even now. So anyway, hope that helps. For more information, check out the books.